This is Vinyl Voices Radio. 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 ESPN 97.5. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm John Dimon. Jesse Sudehan. All right, everybody, welcome to Vinyl Voices Radio. This is another badass show that we're doing because we are in Las Vegas at the Punk Rock Museum. The Tomba proves that we are here. I'm John Denman. This is Jesse Sandejas. Yeah, and this is Lisa Brownlee. This is our first interview of the weekend, and we're starting it off, kicking it off with the co-founder of the Punk Rock Museum. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for, uh, you know, supporting the Tumblr. Yeah. Uh, there's beer in here, so it's, uh, it's not That's, really... <laughs> rumor has it. I, I'm wondering where's mine, you know? Where did I go wrong? That's a good question. <laughs> yeah. as, as someone that could just walk down there and just get your own... Yeah, but that, that's the problem walking down there. I, I got yours brought up for you, didn't you did. I? You did. And, and I forgot all about myself. I think we, we need a, like a vulgar display of power. You just need to get on there. Least, <laughs> they I, say there are, are no selfless acts, and this is one of mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate you sitting down with us for a minute and chatting a little bit about the museum. And so. I'm honored. I'm honored. I, you know, any chance I get to talk about the, the baby we gave birth to, you know? Yeah, this is quite the baby. And, and whenever I first heard about this museum opening up, you know, I was excited about it. You know, it was just a lot of my, how I grew up and music that I listened to for a majority of my life. And so to see someone put out the effort and make it into a museum, I was like, that's going to be really neat. And then whenever I started seeing some of the displays that you guys were posting online and everything, I was like, this is getting really deep. And now that I've walked through it, this place is amazing. I mean, look, I, I live in New York, so I'm coming back and forth a lot. To, to, so every time I come back, I, I'm blown away time and time again, even though, you know, we could be part of the foundation of how this happened, but to see it, it is overwhelming, you know, it's almost like emotionally just time you see it because uh, Mo and I, who's part of our collective, she's gotten really great at, at like making these displays and before we knew it, we were already out of space, so we had to keep adding cases and adding another case and adding another case and finding ways to fit more in because this is, it's going to just keep getting bigger and bigger. We always say we're going to need a bigger boat already, right? Yeah. It is pretty amazing, and the museum doors open last March, March 2023? April 1st. April oh, April 1st. Day. Okay, okay. So, and, but the time leading up to actually opening, I mean, how much how much time passed from I mean, like... It, it, had, it was really like a detail in the pandemic, and it was uh, when everybody was home, and we were all dead in the water from touring and there was nothing nothing happening right we were all trying to find creative ways to uh to stay connected and spend our time and that that's essentially where this was the idea came from where did the idea like who who's the first one I that mean, said i have an idea well, well years ago mike and i did we've known each other for a million years obviously but we used to have this uh magazine called um, punk rock confidential that you'll see on the wall a bunch over there and it basically was kind of like a riff on a people magazine but all punk rock style like punks get married and punks have cars and here's their <laughs> dogs and like everything that dogs. had to do with being off stage, right? Because right. it's not about, I don't play instruments, so I'm not really blown away by seeing somebody's guitar. It's not the thing that motivates me, right? Like I wanna know what happens behind the scenes. And, and so that magazine kind of was like a seed from a million years ago that we didn't even think about. And then during the pandemic, Mike um, hit me up. I was in New York and he was in California with Max, who's my ex-boyfriend from Swing and Utters. And uh, he, they called me at like really early in the morning one day in California and said, hey, Mike has an idea. He wants to do, he wants to open up a, a punk shop in Las Vegas. Records, clothing, stuff like that, and call it Max and Lisa's. And I'm like, no way, no how. <laughs> like, why would I want to work in retail in Las Vegas? This is the last thing in the world I want to do. Right. But at the same time, I had been talking to tons of my friends. I mean, starting with the Bouncing Souls and the Descendants and all these different bands that I had worked with over the years. And I'm like, what are we all doing with all of our free time? And they're like, hey, I'm going through my parents' garage and I'm digging, unearthing all of these things that we've had forever and just mm -hmm. taking the time to, and I go, ding, light bulb. And Mike called me back, you know, within a few days. And I said, what if we do what you're saying? but make it a museum and that and that was that and he was we were sold it literally took overnight like i called everybody i knew i got on the phone i was like we're making a punk rock museum most people <laughs> said punk doesn't belong in a museum but i think they've changed their tune i mean well punk's kind of changed its tune over the last 40 yes. years pretty easily so 
I think it's great. Uh, just just coming, walking through, and just looking at all the photos for one. They're all such fantastic photography, and even just like this, what's behind us right here. You know, you walk yeah. in, you see this. And to know that you were part of it, when you're looking at this, right? I was I was there. This is a work tour show, and it's like that many people were involved in all this, and you see all that energy, right? It's it's incredible, and that's. We're in the section where we are right now, and the, uh, this is kind of chronologically built, this museum in the beginning, and then it winds into demographically and, and regionally, but up here is more of like starting around the 2000s, which is, to some people, you know, what the hell is this stuff? Mm -hmm. to, to other people, where, you know, Jesse's in here and different stuff, this means everything to them you have parents and kids come here together and the parents get to show the kids what their punk music was and the mm -hmm. kids get to show the parents what their that's punk amazing. music is yeah. and that's cool i think one of the things i really love about the museum before even stepping in here is just following it uh, like on the socials and seeing how this is you know you think of a museum sometimes as such a static place right. but that is not the case here. There's always something happening. There's a tattoo shop here. There's a bar here. There's so many um, special, special guests. Dance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. special yeah. guests look, giving tours. Guitar Wolf just did have walked through and they said, oh, we want to play a song. We're like, uh, I don't care what's happening right here. Guitar Wolf is going to play a song right now. They're all the way from Japan. That's amazing. It was, it was incredible. And that's, I, you know, that's the premise is you never know what's going to happen here. And that's what we want. And we don't want it to be sterile. It's, it's almost like we should have called it the anti museum. Because it is a place, it's a church of punk rock, it's a place to, to, to you know, showcase the past, present, and future. But but it's tangible, right? Like we, we say, smell the history. You want to be able to walk past all the leather jackets and smell that that happened, right? And walk into that room and pick up Joan Jett's guitar that she loaned us or, or donated to us and play it. Carl from The Descendants was here yesterday. He's like, I want to give you my bass. And so all these Descendants fans were coming through here yesterday and all, and they're like, I'm just playing Carl's bass right now. We're like, yes, that's what this is. And that's pretty incredible no, that, to be able to share that. Again, just like, especially because Milo was walking around earlier. Yes. Hanging and out. Yeah, he, he's funny. He, I, I'm looking at my phone because I was waiting to meet up with you guys. And I was like, oh, I guess Milo's trying to come. And I didn't notice. And he's like, I want to be a tour guide. I said, well, you should have told me. People would have loved that. So next time, coming coming to the Puck Rock Museum soon, Milo. You guys heard it here first from Lisa Brownlee. <laughs> co-founder of the Punk Rock Museum.
like this anymore Can't live without love Our final chance to try We can't live like this anymore Can't live without love Can't live without love about what's coming next because there's always so much going on here and I know um, in April the museum was kind of instrumental in having an anniversary and also yeah an that was a really big deal the yeah. anniversary because the mayor of Las Vegas came down and made a public proclamation to all of Las Vegas that April 1st is officially punk rock day in Las Vegas to celebrate the you know what this is and she said right when I met her I met her as a female mayor I love that but right when I met her outside she's like I want to be mad at you and I said what are you going to be mad at me about she's like because my son turned out a punk rocker <laughs> and I said I said don't be mad at me I don't have kids I don't like kids I had nothing to do with that <laughs> and, she, and, uh, and and we had a laugh about it but she I mean she knows so much she, her son was really into Tony Hawk and mm -hmm. all sorts of people but she's so cool and, and to see the look on Mike's face when this was happening as a person who in the past may have been shunned a little bit by Las Vegas to, oh. to like have a home here is yeah, incredible. Right. Yeah. Was that did that play any role in him saying we need to do this in Las Vegas? No. I why mean, I why think Las he, Vegas? I think he um, you know, he had something here a few years back before we did this. It was like his version of a small version of what this was, but inside of his what he had the punk house. So he, you know, he's got a pretty massive collection. So he had he already he, he loved Las Vegas. He's been he just has been coming here for a long time, mm -hmm. and he relocated. He actually picked up and moved and relocated here, which I was shocked about. And then so did Mona, and so on and so forth. And they've been trying to convince me, but it, that's not happening. <laughs> I live in New York City. Come on. <laughs> a little bit different. And yeah. I don't drive, so. Yeah. I live in New York City. You don't drive in New right. York City. No, no, you don't need to. Uh, no, this place, like I said, just walking around. We have. Just not clothing uh, from guitars, instruments, the photography, the albums. Uh, there's just so much, so much. I mean, it's a museum, so there's supposed to be history. But collecting all, all these pieces, you probably have so much more that hasn't even been put out yet. True, and that, I think that's that is the one thing that is true about us museum-wise is that there's so much, and you have to, you know, you have to curate it respectfully. And when people, a lot of people do come through. Most, I'd say, ninety point. 95% of the feedback is amazing. But then if you're from Chicago or if you're from Boston or mm. if you're from somewhere that's not fully represented at the time that you come through, you feel a little yeah. hurt about it. But the thing is, the, what we have is what people are willing to loan us or, or trust fall with us, right? And say, we're going to do this. It's going to be respectful. It's going to be done well. And those people that want to participate then are, are here. And the people who are seeing it now will, will be here in the future. Mm -hmm. yeah. You just had a proof of concept, right? It works no matter what the whatever the job is. You have to prove that you, what you're doing. And I think we have. Yeah. Is there a piece here that's got special significance to you? Just, I mean, there's so much here that... I mean, just sitting up here, I'm looking across over in that direction, which is kind of, like I say, in the, in the 2000s, and a lot of what's featured in there is the Warp Tour, which lasted 25 years as a touring festival, and I spent 24 of those years, uh, you know, on that tour. So, so I'd say that, that created a lot of relationships with, for me sure. with, with a lot of bands over the years. But in particular, something that we have right now is something that's very meaningful to me is uh, the Joe Strummer exhibit downstairs because I'm a huge Clash fan. I mean, you could look and see him covered in mm -hmm. Clash tattoos, but the fact that his estate was willing to, to, to put stuff on loan with us because they trusted us, and that's a place. Like, I, I watched three grown men cry. That's three, not two. <laughs> three. three grown men cry yesterday in front of that case because it's, it's, it's emotional, right? Like, I was so emotional it was so emotional that they didn't tell me about it until it was already happening because wow. they go okay guess what big surprise we're getting this this uh clash of shrimp exhibit and i was like so i got to do the ribbon cutting ceremony and Amazing. so it's a really mm -hmm. big deal for me you know yeah. for that to happen and it's and what it did is 
start the ball rolling for other things. Like, you know, Linda Ramone came through and she's like, wow, you know, Johnny should be respected like that. And right. everybody, na na you know, mm -hmm. again, the proof of concept. Um, another thing I want to say really interesting about this museum outside of the tangible stuff is we're one of the only museums in North America using this magnet system. So it's really easy for us to, to move things around, uh, obviously without da damaging them. If you look in there, you're not going to see this in other museums. Everything is designed specifically for us. Those backs of those cases are magnet, and everything's attached on with the magnet Okay, system. I see that so, now. Yeah. So it makes, it makes it easy to move things around. Like, you get something else, get it in there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But even the way it's just all displayed, so... Um. Yeah, we were really fortunate. We worked with, and he's a major part of our collective, is Brian Ray Turcott. He did the book that was uh, fucked up and photocopied, among many, many other things. He's, you know, he's, a, he's definitely a mentor to us. And, and the majority of the stuff you see at the, uh, in the beginning when you walk through is his own personal collection. And he showed us, you know, we're old punk rockers or tour, tour people. We don't know how to make a museum. And he showed us how to respectfully do it, how to layer, how to bring in all the elements to make it tell a story without yeah. too many words. Well, a lot of it, you know, is just people's old memories yeah. and stuff. So they have their own story. When they see an album or they see this band mm -hmm. jacket or something like that, then they have their own story about that music and how it affected them. That's why we have the tour guides, right? So you, you can... You can be here and do four different tours in a day, and you can hear four entirely different stories from four different perspectives. Like we have Dez from Black Flag today. We have, you know, we have Jay from Suicide Machines. Milo just jumped on with somebody else. You have uh, Swami John Reese from Rocket from the Crypt. So every time you're doing a different tour, you're hearing a different story of how how it intertwined into their life and then people instantly want to tell how it affected mm -hmm. them so so that's what this really is it's a very cool way to like experience punk through other people's eyes that you're like wow i didn't even think of that or i never knew, knew that yeah it is amazing we really are very honored to be able to do our series of shows here, you know. Well, thank you. I yeah. mean, I get giddy. I, I used to not want to ever do interviews. I'm like, I'm shy and I don't want to do interviews. And because it would be for other people's things, sure. right? For mm -hmm. years of working for other people. And now when it's something that you, you put your entire heart into and you poured everything you have into it, you, I'm just giddy to talk about it because I'm super proud of what we've all been able to. Yeah, you create. should be. It's amazing. Yeah, and it's, it's a, another great story to tell. Yeah. Yep. Right, so, I mean, My you could give a tour. Soon. Yeah. <laughs> I want to go on the tour with you. Yeah, you know me. Yeah. Mona and I d can do a really good tour together because, you know, we, we personally call 90% of these people and say, hey, can you please trust us and let us, mm -hmm. you know, let us do this. And even today, three or four different bands brought stuff. They're like, oh, I want to bring stuff and I want to participate. And, uh, you know, like I say, we're already we're already looking for, we're gonna need more space, right? Yeah. Uh, and that's great. Yeah. Uh, doesn't sound like there's been much of growing pains around here. Just more Yeah, just... I mean you just you just continually think of new ideas because we're we're also punk expands over to to documentaries and films and books and mm -hmm. variety of photography. And we have like Olga Bordello coming up this week and they're showing their film so we take all of this center out put 80 chairs here and play their movie up here and afterwards wow. they they you know so there's we've had a comedy show here with Fat Mike and different you know so there's there's just so many things so people get married here all the time oh, two right. or three people <laughs> couples got married here yesterday during punk rock bowling in, in the chapel so that is so, great it's that really is fun great. It, it's just Every day is a surprise, and I always leave here smiling. Yeah, yeah, it seems like because well, for one, you never know who's going to walk in. That's that's our t one of our taglines, right? And we also say, if you weren't here, you weren't there, right? <laughs> You're like, oh, I, I wasn't there, I missed it. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's uh, and you get to walk around in a museum with. A, cup full of booze yeah they won't let you do that at the met no you're not no. doing that yeah they're really the sneak it in there <laughs> <laughs> not to say that i have or have no i don't know anything about that but um yeah <laughs> 
No, this is great. Uh, definitely appreciate you coming and hanging out with us. Yeah, it's been a whole lot of fun. I'm excited to hear everything else you're gonna you're gonna do today. So yeah. So I'm just the tip of the iceberg. There's gonna be all sorts of good stories following up. That's right. But thank you guys very much, and I hope you get a chance to like hang out when you're done and meet you guys at the bar for a drink. Huh? For sure, that's certainly will. Right. Actually, thank we can you guys. go do that's that so right excited. now. Thank Lisa, you so much. Thank you very Lisa, much. Thank you so much for having Lisa, me on. Thank you for building Lisa this. Brownlee. Yes, thank you for thank building you, Thank you. <laughs> yes. All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> was I rambling? No, no, no that, that was perfect. Because look, to be I fair, it. I drank a Jaeger bomb before I came up Oh, here. that's good.